the honorable leader of the opposition. While common sense conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, right. fix the budget, and stop the crime after eight years, this prime minister is not worth the cost. The results are in. He told us that if he massively increased debts and taxes, that someone else would pay for it. But of course, the millionaire trust fund prime minister and his billionaire friends who invite him to private islands never pay a dime. It's always seniors, small businesses, and s single mothers. Why would it be any different this time? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, in this budget, like all others, we will take into account the economic context as well as the needs of Canadians. That means for millennials and Gen Z as well, we will unlock supply and housing. We will ensure there are supports for renters. We will make sure there is a national school food program, and Mr. Speaker. And on this side of the House, we will make sure we do that while maintaining a strong fiscal position, AAA credit rating, and the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7. Slogans don't make good policy, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, they've definitely proven that. Their slogan for the last eight years is that you can double the debt and someone else will just pay the bill. But we, out, we know who pays every single time. It is welders and waitresses, seniors, small businesses and single mothers who, who have faced doubling housing costs and unaffordable food. And now their solution is to do more of the same, to pour on billions of dollars more of inflationary spending that will drive up interest rates, inflations, and taxes. Why would we expect it to be any different this time? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, on the contrary, our government has lifted 2.3 million Canadians out of poverty. And I would like to put it to the opposition. If they truly believe in supporting Canadians, why have they voted about the, against the Canada Dental Benefit? Why have they voted against Pharmacare? Why have they voted against $10 a day child care, Mr. Speaker? That does not make sense because slogans do not make good policy. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Except everything she just listed are slogans that they, on which they have not delivered. What they have delivered is they've doubled the debt, which has caused the worst inflation in 40 years, interest rates rising faster than at any time in history, the doubling of housing costs, the worst growth in the G7, the worst housing price inflation in that same group of nations. And today, after all of these devastatingly costly results, what do they do? The same thing that got us in this problem in the first place. Why won't they realize that they're the problem and not the solution? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition has been masquerading across the country as a working class hero, but it's fascinating when you actually listen to what he thinks people do for a living. In a couple of recent speeches, he said he thinks electricians capture electricity from the sky and that welders weld with their bare hands. What's he going to tell me next? The fishermen of my community die beneath the ocean and catch them with their bare teeth? Mr. Speaker, I can forgive the Opposition Leader for being a career politician who's been on the public dime for a couple of decades, but if he wants to represent the interests of the working class, he should talk to a person who has a real job. I love order. I love order. Please. Order, please. Lana ha Lana ha the Honourable Member for La Hill. Eight years of this Liberal NDP Prime Minister, Canadians know that he's not worth the cost. Even proud Liberal and former bank governor David Dodge, who worked for Paul Martin and Jean Chrétien, says that this budget is on track to be the worst one since 1982. Wow. Canadians know that this budget will bring higher taxes.
taxes, higher spending, meaning even more misery for families who can't afford to eat. Instead of drowning everyone, will they fix the budget, axe the tax on farmers and food, and stop the endless spending with the dollar for dollar law so that Canadians can afford to live? Yeah. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure if the Honourable Member is aware, but our fiscal markers are very strong. That is a AAA credit rating by an independent objective observer. That is the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7. All the while, while we will continue to support vulnerable Canadians, something that they refuse to do on the other side of the House by voting against $10 a day childcare, families, and seniors. Every single time, Mr. Speaker, the hypocrisy is palpable. Yes. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure that the Honourable Member is aware of the pain that Canadians right. feel who can't afford to live in Canada. And what's worse is that they can't even afford to die. The Prime Minister's own news agency, the CBC, is reporting in provinces across Canada, dead bodies are being stored in mobile freezers because people can't afford the cost of laying their loved ones to rest. They can't afford their homes, they can't afford their groceries, they can't afford their gas, and now they can't afford a dignified goodbye. We're asking asking him just to stop. We know he won't. So how much inflationary fuel is the PM going to pour on the fire at 4 o'clock today? Yeah, yeah. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, all Canadians deserve to die with dignity. They also deserve supports while they are alive, which is why we have reduced poverty by 22 per cent on this side of the House, which is why we have supported families with $10 a day childcare and the Canada Child Benefit, which has lifted 500,000 children out of poverty. Mr. Speaker, what we will do on this side of the House is maintain a strong fiscal position while supporting Canadians, especially vulnerable. Honourable Canadians, Mr. Speaker, we take that as our priority, unlike the other side of the House. <laughs> the Honourable Member from Central Okanagan, Similkameen, Nicola. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, we know that this prime mini Liberal government are not worth the cost. His recent spending spree is a f inflationary and making everything worse, adding billions to the debt. This year alone, they will throw $52 billion towards debt servicing. That's more than they allocate to the provinces for health care. Doesn't the prime minister see his reckless spending is increasing inflation and debt, burdening all generations of already struggling Canadians? Or is he too busy cutting checks to care? Yeah. Yeah, the Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's delve into the numbers a little bit. When the leader of the Conservatives was Minister of Jobs, unemployment in Canada was 11% higher. Wages in this country were 75% of what they are now, and they had our foreign direct investment behind in Ireland, behind Japan, and now, Mr. Speaker, we are th third in the world, and when you divide it by our population, we're first in the world on bringing good jobs, on bringing investments, on making Canada a place where everybody wants to call home, unlike the Conservatives, which are full of bluff and bluster. The Honourable Member from Central Okanagan, Similkameen, Nicola. Spendy ways, my friends, spendy ways. David Dodge said that this was likely to be the worst budget since 1982. 1982? Who was Prime Minister then? How out of control was that budget? How broke did Canada and Canadians become before Pierre Elliott Trudeau finally took his walk in the snow? Plus ça change, Mr. The more things change. Two million visits to food banks in a single month. Isn't it clear that Canadians are desperately hungry for change? How many more Canadians need to visit food banks before the Prime Minister really realizes that today's budget is a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today sounds like a day for some of the greatest hits, so let's put the Conservatives in the spotlight. Mr. Speaker, when we formed government in 2015, one of the first things we did is we asked the wealthiest 1% of Canadians to pay more. How did the Conservatives vote? Against. When we asked to make sure that Canadians and their children could have money coming to their houses every month. How do the Conservatives vote? Against. And now that we're going to have a national school food program and housing across this country and investments to grow this country, how are the Conservatives going to vote? Against. Order, please.
I'm convinced that all members would like to hear the question by the Honorable Member for Charlebourg, Haute-Saint-Charles.